letter to the FAA this morning. Our next guest says that the Alaska Airlines door plug blowout earlier this month underscores the need for the agency to update its rules on cockpit voice recorders. Specifically, he wants a broad rule for planes to have 25 hours of recording time instead of just a few that they have at this point in most cases. For more, we want to welcome Connecticut Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal. And, and sir, thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Let's, before we get specifically to the letter, just get your thoughts, because you have been pretty vocal about what's happened uh, with the Boeing situation, with the Alaska Airlines, with the door plug blowing out. Do you think that we're doing enough to oversee all of this at the FAA? You know, the letter that I'm writing calling for the 25-hour minimum requirement for the voice recorder is only one example of recommendations made by the NTSB and other safety advocates that have not been followed. So the answer to your question is very simply, no, we're not doing enough about airline safety. And I have grave reservations about putting these planes back in the air so long as there is not sufficient oversight independent scrutiny over the inspection process that the FAA has said it will implement and other aspects of airline production at Boeing. We've relied on the fox to guard the hen house all too long. Meaning you wouldn't put these planes back into place even though the airlines that purchase those planes have kind of gone over this with a fine tooth comb, it seems, at this point. It, it seems like we might see some of those planes back in the air for Alaska Airlines as early as tomorrow and uh, by Sunday for United. It's not enough that they've gone over all of these things, too? Yes. Yes. Uh, we need to be assured the traveling public needs that guarantee that even the airlines have been overseen by the FAA. And we need to know also from the NTSB, which is investigating, what the cause was. I want to hear from the NTSB that it feels that there's enough inspection because those four bolts that reportedly were either missing or defectively reinstalled on that panel that blew out, they may just be the tip of the iceberg in terms of the safety problem. So I want to know more about the details here of the inspection that's going to be conducted, the NTSB <coughs> preliminary review as to what the cause was, and other assurances that there will be independent oversight. Let's talk about this letter that you are sending to the FAA today. It very specifically looks at the cockpit voice recorder. What's the problem with the, with the system? We don't have any, anything from this particular incident because it was overwritten already by the time they went back to look at it? You're absolutely right. This voice recorder was overwritten, so we have no details about what the pilots were saying at the time that the panel blew out an extraordinary occurrence with absolutely extraordinary good luck that they weren't at a higher altitude, which could have caused a catastrophe. And we have no recording because it was overwritten within the two hours. There should be a 25-hour minimum recording. Now, the FAA is considering a rule that would impose that requirement, but only for new aircraft. That rule should be extended to existing aircraft as well. In other words, they should be retrofitted with cockpit voice recorders that have a minimum 25-hour rule. I mean, it's kind of, this, this plane didn't go back up. Why was it overwritten? I don't even understand that. That is the key question. And again, that recommendation, which seems common sense, doesn't it, is only one of about 40 that have not been implemented. 40 recommendations for airline safety from the NTSB and other safety advocates that still are not implemented. And I think that goes to the real system that we have right now for airline safety, which has proved inadequate again and again. So your, your point is the NTSB makes recommendations. The manufacturers or the airlines can choose to disregard them if they want to. And we're still winding up with situations like this. And it's not only the airlines and the manufacturers that can disregard them, but, Bo but also the FAA. And that's part of the problem that the agency that is supposed to safeguard safety is, in effect, ignoring or disregarding the recommendations from the safety advocates. 
the street is looking at what the FAA is, is requiring of Boeing at this point to say that you are not going to be allowed to increase your manufacturing until we get in there and take a deeper look at that. And they think that that is a pretty strong action from the FAA. You disagree? I agree. It is strong action to limit the production lines to 30 planes and to stop the implementation of new production lines. I think those are steps in absolutely the right direction. And Boeing itself is having, in effect, a stand down for quality at the Renton facility where the Seattle Times has reported the reinstallation was faulty. So I think there is growing appreciation for the need to increase the credibility and trust in oversight. But it's only part of what needs to be done. We're moving in the right direction, but not yet there.